President Julius Malema within the EFF about what you just complained about. And my sister, you cannot challenge Julius. No one will ever challenge Julius. How do you challenge? How do you make a comment as a president before you get a fact? I'm talking about that Shidima or Shidima, that lady. A president was supposed to wait until they investigate. Instead of like it's a self hate. You can. There's no one that can challenge that guy. on what we've seen today and what possibly could be happening let's start here it, it, this stuff in politics is not surprising it happens let's start next door in zimbabwe mugabe and nangagwa president and deputy president had a massive fallout nangagwa had to walk on foot from zimbabwe through mozambique to south africa that's one let's come back to south africa you had tabumbeki and jacob zuma president and deputy president massive fallout we have seen that. Outside the ANC COP, you had Mbazi Mashilowa and Muswali Kota, president and deputy president, massive fallout. So this is a fallout of young chaps. They are not the first to fall out. But here is the thing. When people who have been close fall out, whatever they built together will never be the same again. So what does this mean? This is the end of the EFF. Uh, it is Actually, the EFF is being phased out of South African politics. It will take a good 10 years for it to disappear completely, but it will disappear. Julius Malema was the face of the EFF. Flo Chibambo was the brain of the, fear of the EFF. So we, you now have an EFF that is left only with a face. Even that face, by the way, is not looking good. You saw at the press conference, the guy has even lost weight in a day. The brain is gone. So... Uh, if we are looking at the future of South Africa, we must think of the EFF as a thing of the past. Mm. You've mentioned two points that maybe I want us to tackle, the face and the brain. If you are to form a political party, you need both in actual fact. Because what we've ever often heard about Floyd is that he brings that intellectual depth, but Julius Malema is the mobilizer. You cannot have one without the other if you're going to form a strong, uh, formidable opposition in this country. You need both. That's the first one. But the second, the examples that you've given us of the fallouts, whether it be Tabon Begi and uh, former President Jacob Zuma, Nangagwa and Robert Mugabe, in these instances, it seemed that the fallout was not confusing, it was apparent. But here, never have we seen what we saw today, which is a fallout where both men are so cordial. They hold a press briefing together. Mm -hmm. You even have the deputy president stating where he is going. That for some was quite peculiar, wouldn't you say? No, it's not. Uh, let's f first address your first point. You, you're correct. Mm -hmm. You do need a face and a brain mm -hmm. in any political project for it to be successful. That's why Julius and Floyd, they knew this from the beginning, that we have different roles. Julius, you are the face. You are the loud mouth. Uh, Floyd, you are the guy who must sit behind the computer and, and, and write seven cardinals of, and, and principles, whatever they call that. that mm, the cardinal pillars. Exactly. Mm, mm. So, so yes, but that is broken. Now we've got a hollow head uh, that is there. It's a face and there's no brain. So let's park that. But <clears throat> let's come to the, to the second point you are making about the cordiality of their, of their divorce. You know why? because they know each other so well that they are aware that they cannot afford to spill beans about each other. These people have done a lot together, including corruption. Remember, they attended that meeting with Matozzi to accept bribes from VBS together. So Floyd knows... According if, to Matozzi, of course, of because course. We, we need to remain <laughs> fair that in yeah. their absence here, we cannot say, remember, they had the meeting. Uh, that, that, According to uh, Matozzi, But no one least. has denied that meeting, by the way. Dalim Pofi confirmed that that meeting took place. They themselves have not denied that meeting. Mm -hmm. But uh, the contents uh, thereof, even what was the discussed? Money, yeah. That the money f uh, actually flowed. Nobody has denied that. 
the, 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 the point of dispute, was it a bribe? Yes, or, or a donation. Exactly. Yes. I call it a bribe. I mean, I'll die for my sins. Don't worry about me. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. They've done a lot together, these two. So they know they cannot afford to spill beans about each other. That's why they have to be cordial. You can put a gun to Floyd's head. He will never tell you what Julius did. Because he knows if he were to do that, he would be implicating himself. So that's why I was not surprised. They will defend each other to the grave. Because they know that if they were to spill beans, that would actually be suicide on both their part. Mm -hmm. So you believe the theory by some, just like Professor Susan Boyson stated, that she also was entertaining that theory, that possibly there's a grand plan here of some sort of amal amalgamation of these two political parties. You say there's nothing of that sort. No, there isn't. They've had a fallout. No, it's a, it's a genuine fallout. Here's the thing. Floyd is going to MK. You see, <clears throat> people must not read a lot into this MK stuff. Floyd had very few options. One, he couldn't form his own party. He doesn't have the money and the means to form his, his party. Number two, he's not even a charismatic man. So he knew he wouldn't go that route. That's option number one that he had. Option number two is to go back to the ANC. He has enough enemies in the ANC to go back there. Number, uh, uh, and also, the list of ANC unemployed people from parliament, the previous parliament, who are there one position. It's so long that Floyd knew that he was, was going to be at the back. The only option was... Where does he find a political home that will protect him? Because remember, you could be arrested by the way, there's a VBS. I, my, my but theory, how would my theory Mkonde is, would protect him when you've got the former president or the president of Mkonde Wesiswe currently in the court? Exactly. Why would so he, he be protected? He looked for a home where you have a largest concentration of people who are facing criminal <laughs> stuff in, from the president himself. So if you go to a home like that, you can be protected. No, but can, the EFF, no, the they EFF, can, they've actually had their own president, their own leader, has sat in a court bench. So they manifesto. But there's one thing which I want to highlight, comrades, referring uh, here, is that as communist forces, as revolutionary working class forces, particularly those who are in leadership positions, we should study Marxism. We should study... Marxism, Lenin, we must study our tools of analysis and guide to action. And from time to time, we must seek to improve our levels of understanding. The Communist Manifesto says that we are the most advanced and most resolute sections of the working class parties. So we should understand the essence of what we stand for so that we're not gullible. You know, the problem with a lot of leaders is that they are gullible. They are very naive. Like, they are easy to sway this side or this side because they are not grounded on thorough and proper revolutionary theory and understanding. You can't want to be a leader who doesn't understand and internalize revolutionary theory. So if, if you have got leadership aspirations, you should be grounded theoretically, ideologically. You must know what the movement stands for, what the working class struggles entails. But importantly, you must internalize something said by Amilcar Cabral, that always bear in mind that people are not fighting for ideas, for the things in anyone's head. They are fighting to win the material benefits, to live better and to live in peace, to see their lives go forward, to guarantee the future of their children that we must always appreciate the relationship between theory and practice. We must build our internal capacity to make practical all the aspirations of the communist movement. So comrades, all of us, let us continue to enhance and harness our understanding of the ideological tools of analysis. Let us continue to fight for the working class. Let us fight for working class unity. Let us stand by the clarion call of the Communist Manifesto that calls for all workers of the world to unite so that we can defeat the nonsensical capitalist system that is subjecting the majority of the people to starvation, to poverty, to high levels of unemployment, to, 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 un, un, to diseases, to preventable deaths. And the only way we can do that is when the working class is united 
to overthrow politically the bourgeoisie and their representatives. There are so many political parties in the world which are nothing but representatives, committees that manage the common affairs of the whole bourgeoisie. Those who must overthrow and replace with a socialist progressive government in all our nationalities in the entire world. Workers of the world unite, you have got nothing to lose but your chains. Amanda.